Now, a story the Speakmans have described as one of the most heartbreaking they've ever heard. Fifteen years ago, a tragic turn of events changed Anita Williamson's life forever. Here's her story. In March 2000, Anita Williamson suffered an unimaginable loss when her three-year-old son, Kane, was killed by a bin lorry. I don't remember much at all. It's almost like my memories completely froze, like the accidents wiped my memory. Anita had just returned home with Kane. The phone was ringing as we went in the door. Um, I answered the phone and then it was only a few minutes later that um, this man come to the gates asking me if I had a little boy. And he said, because I've run a little boy over and I think he's dead. And I just jumped over the gates and ran down to where Cain was on the road. A couple of hours after the accident, um, went to the mortuary um, and Kane was behind the glass screen and I then thought that I was being punished because I didn't protect him because they wouldn't let me near him and hold him and I just remember wanting to shout at them that he was my child. Sorry. My family suffer because of me, because of how I am, because they never know how I'm going to be. I try my best for my family, but I just exist. I've got no quality of life, really. Anita, if you were going to score your life out of 10, what would you score your life before the accident? 10. And what about now? 3. And what about when we asked you to see an image of Kane? What do you see? The road accident. The accident. When you recall Kane's image, is the moment of the accident and how you saw him then, is because in essence, you're trapped in time in that moment and that is an absolute classic sign of post-traumatic stress disorder. Whose fault was it, Anita? My fault. Sola? Yeah. So all you did is walk into your house, your safe place, with your son? How is that your fault? No, it's not. Sorry? It's not my fault. What parent have you ever known that has watched the child for 24 hours every day? Mm. No parent. Sorry? No parent. You were a good mum, weren't you? Yes. And you're still a good mum, aren't you? Yes. Who do you think made him happy? Me. Yeah. Well, everyone's in bits here. Yeah. Uh, Nick, Eva and Anita join us now. Um, where do you start in, in your help for a story like this? Well, it's very difficult, obviously. Um, but <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, from, I think from anyone's point of view, is taking the guilt on board that you could have done something different. You, you know, you, you try and fix the situation. So what happened with Anita and a lot of people who suffer PTSD, you, as a protection mechanism, you become emotionally detached from the situation, which is why when Anita was looking at the photographs, she was looking at a little boy, but it didn't feel like her little boy. And she couldn't, she'd lost all the memories because she was just trapped in that moment. And this was like a barrier that she needed to survive because she, she had a, her daughter as well. That she, she did, needed and, to and that's exactly what it was. Uh, when we met um, with Anita, she spoke about the incident, and it, but there was nothing. It was just a story, um, and it was it was a it was a protection mechanism that she had to kick in because she still had to be a mum to a little girl. But you, you say this is not about taking away uh, the the sadness or, or the grief. This is not. You, we, there's no miracle mm, cure. No. I mean, the first thing that 
we said to Anita was that we will never be able to take the pain of losing your little boy. Um, but what we, what we can do is, is help you to remember him and celebrate his life. Mm -hmm. uh, because when we asked Anita to recall his picture, she'd forgotten everything other than that moment when she went over the gate. Mm -hmm. And we were very honest and said that, you know, there will still be pain, but um, she hadn't grieved. For 15 years, Anita hadn't grieved at all. Mm. And that was something that we thought was really important. And, and it did finally happen for you, didn't How it? How did you find the, the therapy? What was it like for you? Um, it was very intense, but it, it, was, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. In what way? Um, I can't even describe in what way what they did with me, but it was, it just brought everything back. Brought my memories back. I hadn't had any memories for, well, for 15 years. Was it a case of not allowing yourself any memories? No, I was just... They weren't... There was just happen. nothing there. I had no emotion. And so how has it, how has it changed you now? Because, you know, you've, you've, got, a, you've got a small family, and, and how has it changed you a, as a mum? I'm free now. I'm free. And I don't feel crippled anymore with guilt. Um, and my family mean the world to me. Uh, I just... I just can't thank them enough. I just feel free. I'm not trapped anymore. Mm. And I'm, my memories are coming back slowly. Well, we've Gosh, got a, a clip here of you looking at photographs. Yeah, yeah, yeah talk pictures. us through what you're doing here. The memories coming back? Yeah. So what's different? I can remember the pictures. I can remember where they were, what was going on, what was happening. I remember him riding round on this little bike. I remember him whizzing all round that courtyard. Before that was just a photograph. That was just a else. photograph and I couldn't remember anything. I feel a bit emotional. <laughs> And it's, uh, it's almost as if the curtain's been opened on your, on your memories. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just like I've got my life back and I've got my little boy back. That's it's how I feel. Such a difference on, uh, on family life, on Neil, your husband, and yeah. your other son, Ollie, yeah. who, is, uh, who is eight. Um, a, a big impact on them. Yeah. And they've actually done a little message. I think it's really helped her. And she's a lot happier. She's got a massive grin and a massive one. She's basically still smiling, and it was a proper smile, which is something I haven't seen for many a year, probably since my, probably our wedding day. It just makes me happy as well. Just happy. She's actually been playing with our son a little bit more. He was just proper joking, practical joking him, playing about. She's the perfect mum that I would always have. If I choose anyone in the world, I would choose her. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, gosh. I mean, that must be amazing. That is absolutely amazing. I love my family. It just means so much to me, and yeah. I just want them to be happy. And I just want to be happy and share my life with them. Well, I hope this is the, the start of all of that. You're right. <laughs> oh, just, oh, my goodness. You've just been through a lot, so it's just yeah. nice to see you come out the other side yeah. of it. Um, well done. Thank, yeah. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Well done, thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank a big, you. That was a tough one. It was, but probably one of the most rewarding um, that we've worked on. And, you know, when we met you, you were existing, and we're just so yeah. happy that you can work And Anita now. gave us such a gift saying that we've given her a son back. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you Thank very you. Much. Thank you. I just thank want you. to thank these <laughs> guys. They're just amazing. Uh, they are amazing. <laughs>